thank you very much. Let me, sorry, let me just get started. So this uh, presentation is uh, based on research with uh, Sharon Lee, who's my PhD student. So this project is about modeling new cases and new deaths on COVID-19 from the European CDC website uh, where we download the data. We started this project on April the 2nd when the number of cases and deaths were growing rapidly in the UK. And our initial purpose was just to predict the turning point of the epidemic in the UK. We broadened the project to include all countries and to um, try and estimate the total number of cases and deaths that we were expecting and to estimate this uh, length of time that we expected from peak to trough and to provide one day ahead forecasting and, and other things. We post new estimates every day at the INET website, um, thanks to Jake Dyer, and uh, I updated already today, so you can uh, check that out. So this is about modeling, and the main feature of the data that we want to model is the trend, uh, which is something that economists are very familiar with. But unlike most economic time series, uh, such as GDP and stock market, uh, which have up the, tend to have upward trends, these data have both upward and downward segments. So we need a model that's gonna capture both of these things. Uh, we try to use very simple methods to uh, capture this trend. Uh, and the model is going to allow us to extrapolate into the future. So let's start with some data. So what I'm showing here is the uh, number of cases per day, new cases per day in the United Kingdom. And the starting point of this data is from December the 31st, 2019, when the epidemic uh, uh, started according to the WHO. So as you can see from this, we have an upward uh, segment and a downward segment. Uh, and the, uh, you know, so we have uh, starting around about day 80, which is sometime in March, we, we went up to a peak and then, then we went down to where we are today. Uh, the deaths uh, follow a similar trajectory, uh, and so you can see how they uh, increased up to, uh, to this time period where we went over 1,000 deaths a day, and now we have come down to a much lower, uh, more manageable number of deaths, around about 180. So the modeling is going to take place with uh, transform, log transform data. So this is showing you the same data uh, using a log transform. So we're using... Uh, the log here because it condenses the data, so it shrinks the scale, and it makes the, the models that we uh, work with more apparent, so that the, 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 the curve of the data is more apparent for our model. Uh, so we're able to put both uh, cases and deaths together, uh, and you can also see the early stages more clearly from this picture. Uh, so I should remark that the schools, uh, UK schools closed uh, 20th of March, which was about day 80, which is day 80, and you can see at that point, we were still in the upward part of the curve. Okay, so that's the... So the methodology, uh, we fit a number of different uh, parametric models for the logarithm of cases and deaths uh, that allow for a turning point. Uh, in particular, quadratic trend, which when you transform back to levels, corresponds to a Gaussian curve, a bell curve, which we know from many other uh, modeling situations. We also consider a quartic trend, uh, which when we transform back to uh, levels gives a fat bottom curve that has an elongated peak and, and therefore allows for a longer time spent at the peak. We also consider a linear and log trend, uh, which when you transform back gives you something like a chi-squared shape that builds in an asymmetry. So we have these three different um, uh, curves that we consider. Uh, we also consider prediction intervals around these curves that reflect some of the uncertainty about the predictions that we're making. So these, uh, these are kind of limited. They do assume that the model is correct and that the parameters are known. So here is the result of our benchmark fitting uh, for the UK. Uh, so the solid blue line is the, <clears throat> is the, uh, the estimated curve, which is estimated with the 60 most recent data points, which are the red dots. And the dotted lines of the prediction intervals, 95% prediction intervals. So they kind of uh, envelope all of the, the data here. And so what we get from the model is that we're able to uh, extrapolate from where we are today out to the future. Uh, and from this fitting, you can see that 
Um, you know, we, you know the, the peak of the curve occurred around about 40 days ago uh, at around about 5,100 cases. Uh, currently, June the 3rd, we're about 1,700 cases per day. So, the, uh, so we've shrunk by a factor of three. So the risk that we face when we go out in the world is about a third based on the shrinkage. And that if we extrapolate into the future, we're predicting between 10 and 15 days that we should get down to about a tenth of the, uh, the risk. Okay, so that's what we get from that. Um, this is the same picture for deaths. Uh, and you can see rather surprisingly that the peak, uh, uh, peak point for deaths occurred a little bit prior to the peak curve for the cases. Okay, so as I said at the beginning, we've applied this for uh, you know, 200 countries and territories around the world. And it's important to note that uh, countries are at different stages in this epidemic. Uh, so we list all the, what we classify as the early stages, which are countries that have not yet reached the peak. Uh, so there's a lot of countries from Latin America there. There are countries from Africa, from the Middle East and from South Asia. The middle, uh, category is what I'm calling countries for which the peak has passed or more or less passed and that includes uh, the US and Canada, UK, a number of European countries, Middle Eastern countries and a few countries from the Far East. The end game uh, is countries that we consider to have well passed the, the peak uh, and we're defining this as being uh, the number of cases as being one-tenth of the peak level. Uh, so that includes China, Thai, you know, a lot of Asian countries, um, some islands and uh, European countries. So let's have a look at some of the pictures. So I'm not going to spend a lot of time talking about China because, you know, that's worth a whole, talk, a whole seminar in itself. But the, the key point here is that China passed its peak, you know, page, uh, period uh, up to day 40. Uh, it then had a sort of a second peak, uh, which is relatively minor. It should be more... Uh, noted from the uh, from the graph uh, and then now has relatively negligible negligible number of cases it hasn't completely disappeared but it's fairly, fairly negligible bearing in mind this is a, a log scale so let's look at new zealand so new zealand uh you know had a very sh very sharp rapid increase in number of cases and then also a relatively sharp rapid decrease in cases and, and now we're in the definitely in the negligible zone. Andorra, another small country, but landlocked, you know, had a similar trajectory, roughly symmetric. Switzerland, uh, you know, much bigger country, you know, has, uh, you know, a more sort of slower uh, trajectory on the downside relative to the upside. Germany, similarly, um, you know, passed its peak and we're measuring, remember, we're measuring things in the log scale. So when we go one unit down, that corresponds to uh, a ten tenfold reduction in the numbers. Italy, again, we have, uh, clearly we've uh, you know, entered the end game and we've reduced by a factor of more than 10, but the right uh, curve going down is, is, seems to be much slower. Japan, I include Japan because this is a little bit strange in that the upside of the curve for Japan is appears to be quite slow relative to a lot of these other countries and the peak was passed you know, relatively recently and it seems to be fairly symmetric. The middle game, so the United States is firmly in the middle game and it seems to be the gift that keeps on giving. We've got, you know, keep on getting about 20,000 cases a day and it seems hard to detect a decrease in the peak. There is better news on the deaths front, these do seem to be firmly going downwards. Canada is similar, slightly better. There does seem to be a definite downturn in the number of cases uh, and uh, similar for the, for the deaths. Sweden, uh, so this is a country a lot in the news. So we're sort of at the peak here. What I find a bit surprising here is the volatility in the number of deaths. Um, Singapore is also past the peak, but it's still quite high cases, hasn't sort of entered the end game according to our definition. The surprising feature here is the very low number of deaths that you see. Now let's look at the early stages and I just selecting a you know, sample of countries. So Bangladesh is one that is you know, still experiencing rapid growth, Egypt, Peru, uh, South Africa. 
So uh, this is a sample of countries, the well-known ones, Brazil and India also, you know, in this category. So let me conclude. Uh, so from the work that we've done, uh, we can you see that the UK and most European countries have passed their peak and close to the end game. Uh, many countries elsewhere are still in the early stages, uh, predicted to have a large number of cases. In terms of the model validation, our uh, one-day ahead forecasting has been quite good if you discount some of the data problems. Long-term has been rather challenging. We consistently underestimated the number of cases and deaths for the UK and US. Some specific findings, the shapes of the curves are quite different across countries. The timing of peaks is different. Uh, and in some cases, deaths seem to peak before, before cases. The characteristics of the end game countries vary quite a lot. You know, there are many small islands, but you also have landlocked countries like Luxembourg, uh, China, and so on. Uh, differences across countries in terms of when the peaks occurred um, and uh, ratios of deaths to cases, uh, there, are, there are various explanations for that. So let me just talk briefly. So I, you know, I've basically just talked about the data. Uh, I haven't really brought in behavior and other issues and, and the next speaker will, will bring that out. Um, you know, in our future work, we hope to build a, a multivariate model that takes account of the, the, you know, the network connections between countries and the dynamic relationship between cases and deaths and to investigate some of the differences between countries in terms of the shape of the curve, the peak, duration, et cetera. So here is a you know, sample result, which is very preliminary because all the data is not in. But we do find that number of cases uh, per million is, is uh, increasing in the obesity rate in, in each country, as well as population density and GNP. Okay, so that's uh, my talk.